Hello, hello everybody. Welcome to my channel. This is Confidence J, and today we, today this is my podcast, Black and Weird. So Black and Weird, we are currently going to talk about true crime. So this week we got a serial killer from Mexico. So our serial killer today is Fernando Hernandez Lave. I hope I said that right. <laughs> He's born in Cernavaca, Moreslo, Mexico. <laughs> I'm sorry, I haven't sure I said it right. I probably didn't. But he was born on November 30th in 1964. And his sign is Sag- Sagittarius. And he's a Chinese dragon. I'm sorry, I really enjoy like Chinese zodiac signs and Greek zodiac signs. And he is known as being the most prolific serial killer in the history of Mexico for the year of 1982 through 1999. It was said he was an organized killer. I don't know how to say his word correctly, not going to lie. So, nomadic, hedonistic. And motives by interest. Okay. So his background is very unknown. So we don't know his parents. We don't know family. We don't know how or why he got started a killing. And we also don't know who his victims was. I know. How we talk about serial killer. But I don't know when his first kill was or whatever. But hey, I just going to do the best I can. But when he got caught. So I'm not really sure when exactly he got caught or how he got caught. So like it sounds weird but I'm not talking about him getting caught. But him him getting caught was like how would like lead up to him getting caught. How did they think about that. But anyway. So he was caught by Mexican authorities and reported that they captured a person who claimed to kill over a hundred people. Not gonna lie. Between me and you. I never heard of serial killer killing that high so so authorities did not believe that nobody believed that i don't believe that but throughout the years they started realizing he was telling the truth and my part we're gonna talk about that <laughs> later so they first got him in 1982 they first arrested him only because uh, they arrested him 35 miles of south Me- I'm sorry. I'm reading right now. <laughs> they got him 35 miles south of Mexico City on robbery charges, but escaped from jail through tunneling through a wall. So he turned his way out of jail. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> his second escape, he got arrested again on suspicion of murder and robbery in 1982, but said he escaped again from Mexico City rest- Mexico City Western Pent. Pentateri, I cannot say that, from Marlos, state officials had to, so the state official had to apply the federal government for Fernando to be transferred to a maximum security prison, because he kept freaking escaping, but he was recaptured in the year 1999, and also, fun fact, I was born in May, May 1999, so he got caught in April 1999, so that's fun to hear, something around your birthday, yeah. Okay, so his trial, so the saying he was he was arrested on March 24th near the Malo, wait, damn it, I can't say, <laughs> Maralos State Capital of Carbon. I, mind you, y'all, I did put like like th- the correct cross nation how to say it on my uh my Google Doc, but I cannot say it correctly. So I'm sorry if I'm saying it wrong. So I'm trying, I'm not being offensive. I literally was trying to make sure I say his words correctly. But anyway, it said he was suspected of killing. 137 killings, six kidnapping and robberies in in Mexico City and five states. So let me try to say this correctly: Marelos, Jalisco, Nilamal. Not said that somewhere. I got no idea. God damn it. Guanajuato, Michoacan. I said that so really. I know I did. God damn. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but anyway, another. Uh, another uh, link source I was looking at it said it was him and three other comp- accomplice was accused of several count of robbery and kidnapping so not really sure if that was true or not but that will also say it's another source because another source didn't include the other three people and one source did include it so and he also said that Fernando actually was trying to take back about the killings he admitted to a duck in journalist from let me say this correctly Holland Scow and killing police officer from Morelos. He said that the only reason why he confessed it because I don't call police officer, I'm not sure that's the correct term, but police officer had beaten him to making confession and he and they threatened his wife that uh 
his wife would have gotten raped if he didn't plead guilty. Also, another source also said about taking away his kids. So, hey, you cannot ask me. It was like, wait, when did he get married? When did he have kids? I don't know. I was Googling, like, when did he get married? When did he have kids? How many kids do he have? What his wife's name? I could not find nothing. Like, you telling me this man been in jail since 1999 and, but actually, I forgot the first year I say, but like, been in jail since 1999, we got nothing? Nothing? But anyway, they say if he didn't confess to killing over 100 people, that they would rape his wife and take away his kids. And it's funny thing about it, the authorities didn't comment on his statement, so meaning it could be true or it could be false. We're not too sure, but either way, it's like, uh, okay. And it said when he was getting transferred to the, uh, how can I say, pit, pit, I recorded this, I put it down too, pensioner, no, damn, it's a P word, <laughs> in the state of Malau, he had heavy police detail from, because mainly to protect him from the protesters who want justice on their own hands, so meaning they want to kill him, and protect from the, they wanted to protect him from the angry protesters, and they also wanted to make sure he didn't escape again. Because, you know, he escaped two times over the last 13 years. And also, he he was, like, handcuffed and a bulletproof vest. So they was, like, really worried about him dying from uh, the protesters, which I don't blame them because, yeah. In one article, it said he was getting transferred to state prison. Crowd of victims family called for his blood. Like I'm saying, they want to kill him. Also, his case, be, his case appeared to be the biggest case history murder case in the whole South Bend, Mexico City over the issue of death, death penalty. So, fun fact, Mexico don't do death penalties anymore. So they actually abolished uh, capital punishment on March 15, 2005. And they had the use of death penalty since the civil case in 1957 and for the military case since 1961. So, that's why they didn't really think about getting a death penalty because they don't do that like yeah they stopped before the whole thing happened and i was like oh what but anyway fun fact in the victims of family shouted for it to be applied to fernando because like he killed fucking people's family like i would want to have that like uh okay but this person named joel joel actually i'm not sure his name is joel it's a spanish name is it a spanish name no 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 joel uebe linda said we want to lynch him he was one out of 50 people who was gathered outside by the Moale State, State Prosecutor's Office before before Fernando was taken to the state prison. Fernando, no, not Fernando. Uh, Joey believed that Fernando killed his brothers and cousins. So, like saying, ain't no no way to know what his victim is because, like, they don't got nothing. And since he killed over 100 people, most likely all the missing people for the families have been missing or somehow came up dead, they more like blaming him. Because, like, other 100 people, it's like, uh, they got to be one of our family members or friends. Anyway. I'm sorry. So, prosecutor, prosecutor Jose Leonardo Castillo Pombo said he opposed the death penalty, but also added, quote, if the country is legally prepared to apply, Mexicans should hold a referendum so that public opinion can decide. And also, well, end quote, also, the Jose, he also said a few days after the investigation began, the counts of death towards Fernando began to grow, like, very quick. Like, uh, well, we gotta do something. <laughs> and also, when the other protest, protester, Nancy Flores Montel, quote, said, I hope you die for killing my parents. God is gonna make you hear their voices forever. Which, I don't blame her. I was like, mm-hmm, I would say that too. And... End quote. As as evidence rolled, prosecutor in outlying state, the number of charges continued to rise. So they eleven more murder investigations was for by the prosecutor prosecutors. I'm sorry, I just say my words correctly. And rest. So they had this more deaths. So they found eleven more murders, and it was going to bring it. They found eleven more murders in the case loads. Uh, 33 in four days. I said that's so wrong. <laughs> but they found more people in the four days since he got in jail. So, under the Mexican laws, he is only going to be chasing, he only going to be facing 50 years in prison. And if he had good behaviors, he can get off early. 
So, and also another nickname. So, I could, like, I found something about this nickname, but also didn't. But it said he was nicknamed Pacho Lopez because the television cameras and confession to killing more than 100 people and kidnapping six. So, the crimes were committed in four, well, technically you said five at first, but I guess four different states. And when he was asked why he did it, he replied, quote, I killed them all because I had to do it. I did not know how to do another thing. Which is like, uh, yes, you do. You can just live. And it's like, uh, okay. <laughs> but anyway, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to laugh, but just, uh, I'm nervous right now, and I'm talking fast. It's just, woo, this is my first time doing this, y'all. Don't judge me. So, a little fun facts, though. He currently in La Palama prison, and if he completes his sentences, he'll be released in 2049 at age 40, no, 84 years old. So, that means he get out of uh, 2049, I'm going to be 50, which is very crazy to think about that. And then it said when he got captured in 1999, I'm sorry, this was very funny to me. But he got captured in 1999, he didn't try to escape. So mind you, he escaped two times. I don't think I said that. But he escaped two times and the third time got called, he didn't try to escape. You know why he didn't try, try to escape? Guess, not like, guess y'all, guess why he didn't try to escape. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, he didn't escape because he was trying to kill himself. Yeah, he literally tried to give himself suicide. Not not give himself suicide, but he would try to kill himself. He would try to commit suicide. And I don't know where he found this rope from, but he found a rope. And mind you, I never been in a Mexican prison cell, so I can't really say going to say as other prison cells throughout the whole world. But I don't know what he got the rope rope connected to, but he got the rope somehow. And he lived. I guess he lifted himself up. He was trying to do it, but it didn't work. You know why it didn't it work? Cause his weight. <laughs> Sorry. So his weight, supposedly he weighed one fifty kilo, and and for cause you know America we don't do kilos like that. So that means in the U S he was weighed three hundred thirty pounds and some change. Cause like I said, when you search it up, it got some little extra stuff. So it's a change. So he literally tried to kill himself and it didn't work out cause his weight. I'm not I'm not fashioning nobody. It's not what I'm doing, but it's like very weird how he tried to kill himself and his weight was like uh no. But it say he uh, he minor like his rope broke too. But he suffered minor injuries and yeah. Also, psychologist he had exam and said he had. I cannot say this word. Psych. He had psychotic personality and murder for personal satisfaction. So yeah. So this is the case of Fernando. And hope you had a good time, everybody. Happy. October. I don't know what to do that information, but have a good one, everybody.